Okay, today in order to kind of push this forward, I'm just going to be taking a quick look at something that I've been working on, on and off throughout a couple of years here with Seven Days to Die. It is the graphical user interface portion of it. And I'm going to be taking a look at some of the modding around that, which is kind of in my wheelhouse because it's XML. And while I'm not really any kind of pro with that, I'm a self-taught web developer. So I'm kind of used to just having to figure things out. Okay, so let's take a look at the game, bringing that up. Here we go. So as you can see right now, the there's a couple of things. Uh, this is a data point. These are data points that are being pulled in from your character window here. Uh, it had problems pulling in these, these up top here for some reason, but I can pull those in and it has to do with, I believe, the controller and probably the pathing itself. Here you've got the standard tool belt, but that'll be that potentially can be changed. It's easy to do. Pulling in some things like elevation, external temperature, and temperature of your character. Um, everything else is kind of the same as far as like the buffs and the stealth. That's really the same. As you'll notice already, the top here, the uh, that icon's different as far as the compass is concerned, the background for it. I also have day and time appearing over everything because I found that an issue when I was crafting. Uh, let's take a look at some of that real quick. Under Windows, Code. Okay, let me make this a little bit bigger for you here. So these are things that I was testing out. Um, here's the tool belt. I can actually add that back in. The custom tool belt. As an example. Once I do that. We should see the change here. I've streamed a, a little bit of this on Twitch. The graphics for, I'll point out a couple of things here as well that I didn't last time. So there you go. There's the pieces. The background is a little bit different. The the things behind the icons for your items, these background, this background square, those are graphics. And the background little piece of wood back there, that's not going to remain there. I just had that there as a test to see if I could add a background in. It's easy to do. The, you know, kind of wish I could see the entire game here. Let's just make an adjustment there. 1680 by 1050. Oh, that actually might have fixed it for some reason. Okay, video game. But you can see here at the bottom, the health, stamina, food, and water. Those items, uh, the skulls that are being used there, the, I did that. Those are custom custom done by me. And I have them functioning in a radial format instead of the bar that I've... I, I kind of don't really like having to do exactly what everyone else does. So either it's a vertical or horizontal bar for everyone else when they do health and stamina. And I wanted to change that effect, uh, as you can see there. So I like that. Um, let's see here. The other thing is it was, it really started from the daytime over overview. As far as the function is concerned, I haven't really changed anything. I don't have any real concern about that right now. There's a lot of mods out there that actually change the functionality of some of the, of the items, the game. I, for example, have my walk speed much quicker. That's really easy to do. Let me show you that real quick. So your seven days to die, you have to add your mod, your modifications in a mods folder, name your folder, whatever your mods you want it to be. And mine's B3G to have this mod info XML, which there is plenty of forum stuff about how to add this. There's plenty of videos. That's not the point that I'm really getting across here. <clears throat> okay. In regards to textures, you have different unit frames that you have to add for your icons. You can add in 
icons, different icons here. Um, they changed that from prior. It used to be something else. Now you have to reference specifically UI atlases, item icon atlas. And the icons can now actually be, I believe, just about any size, but you should probably limit to, to whatever you think would be best for the given resolution of your screen. The properties for this details are 116 by 80 because that's what it used to have to be it had to be 116 by 80 so i just have it as as a generic default my assumption is if you use a better a larger version you'll probably get better clarity out of it but um how i have it functioning i have one background image one background image one background image and then i have the overlaying background image that's actually being uh, modified in a radial 360 format every time there is a change to it instead of a vertical or horizontal, as I mentioned before. For example, here's water, and you'll see there's the texture, the background texture for it. So texture is the element. This is the name, the specific name for it. You can name it whatever you want. It's just for your own reference and to differentiate it from any other type of textures. Depth is your, <clears throat> you have to think about this in, in terms of web development, it would be the Z index, which is basically level zero is the base level. Level one is one level on top of that. If you think about a stack of paper, so zero is at, sitting directly on the table. One is right above it. Two is right above that. Three is right and so on and so forth. So this is at the very bottom of the, well, pretty close to the bottom of the stack. When you're stacking items, this is the size of the element. Texture equals is the reference to the location of where that element is within the mod folder itself. And this is how you would reference that. Textures, so we can look at that specifically here. Mods. So it defaults to mod folder textures. So mod folder is B3G. Here's textures. Here's unit frames. And there's the unit frame for the background for the health radial. And there it is right there, water empty. Well, for this one, it's water, for water empty radial. And you do have to specifically reference the file type format. With the sprite, you do not, sprites are different. We'll go over that in a second. Materials, um, it's just the material type. And then the positioning, if you wanna move it around within the frame itself. There's a lot in regards to the movement of these, you know, with the placement of grids and, and the items within them. I'm not going to go over that. A lot of other videos go over that. I'm only going to go over things that some videos don't go over. Um, Sprite, which is the graphical portion of things specifically and what can be done with them. Sprite, same as the texture, except as you can see, it's got the name, it's got the positioning within the element of the grid, it's got the size, it has a depth layer. Atlas is in reference to uh, a library essentially so item icon atlas so this is where we get into some territory that doesn't isn't specifically explained anywhere that I'm aware so UI atlases item icon atlas is the folder you have to name the folder UI atlases UI atlases and then in that you have to have another folder named item icon atlas so that makes sense how that is so it's referencing this folder from there, the sprite name is the name of your PNG. So B3G Water Radial um, would be here, B3G Water Radial. Notice you don't have to reference the extension, the PNG, because sprites don't, their, their assumption is that it is going to be a PNG and that's what you should do. Color type filled. Filled basically just says that it is gonna be a filled sprite so fill direction radial 360 the other two options for sprite or would be ver or vertical and horizontal you'll also see something called a filled sprite and filled sprites can only have horizontal and vertical they cannot have radial 360. oops there we go we're back fill at zero so that's the reference of the value for where it's going to start Global opacity too, meaning you can basically kind of uh, double up the effect of how strong it appears. You could, if you set it at zero, it would be nothing. Um, so this is kind of like layering at times two, makes it brighter essentially, or something like that. Controller HUD stat bar. This is the reference to where it's going to get the value from. So HUD stat bar is a controller within the game 
that will reference the stat type of water. So here's the next item right here. So all of this becomes kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt, um, honestly, when you don't know what's going on. And I, it was really hard to kind of cobble together a lot of this information. And I've done it over a, a period of time. So I don't always work on this game. Uh, label uh, is the basically just text. And you specifically see here text, player water. So player water is a variable name being referenced by this controller. Whereas over here, it's the controller HUD stat bar. This controller is player stats window. How I found out those things was basically just digging into the data, the config, the XUI, the, con the windows themselves, the original default windows, and you can look up HUD stat bar. There it is right there. And you can find stamina. There's health. Uh, water, I don't think exists. Uh, let's take a look here. Well, for for example, water. Yeah, water, water, water. Let's look at water. So yeah, here's a quick way to kind of look up some information about this. Water apparently is a value that can be pulled from the HUD stat bar. Oh, this is play water. I'm getting them confused. Stat type water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, there, there's some really weird things where I think there's old references to controls that uh, exist, but they don't show up within the windows here. Uh, in fact, because if you look at this player water title and player water percent, player water fill, um, it's pulling from a controller called player stats window. But I'm able to reference the value for the water from the HUD stat bar, which I don't know it. I don't know how that, you know, it, it doesn't seem to exist here, but it's, it could be from something in the core, you know, game itself that, you know, has that path reference that it's still, still, it's still there somewhere. Otherwise I'm, I'm referencing player stat window and you can always test out like whether or not the control, it'll work for this, you know, the reference of the, with the controller. If you just, swap those around but i and this, that's this gets a little kind of ridiculous because i don't really fully understand where all these variable names are coming from unless i compare it to the files themselves from the original game i believe if you take the game and you decompile it or open the project in c sharp uh something like microsoft visual studio um you should be able to look up, you know, the references to all these things. But if you're doing it the way that I am with just looking at the XML with through XPath, um, well, actually just Visual Studio Code, the XPath stuff through the XML files, it's, you, you're, you can only go off of what you see. So, um, but given that, I've, I've, I've made some pretty decent progress. And um, the values that you see there, the zombie kills, deaths, and kilometers traveled, I'll probably find a place for them on the UI just to have, you know, just to have up. Because uh, I think it's an interesting to show, especially if you like streaming the game. You can kind of have some of the stats there. People can see how many times you died. They like that. And uh, moving around the elements is also a fun thing, too, such as this. This could be a vertical orientation, I think. So that's something I'm going to try out. So if we look back at the tool belt, here's the tool belt here. Uh, and I think that the grid repeater content controller you can find somewhere where it will tell you that there's a value for arrangement vertical. So, I mean, this is an option right here to, to you know, this is kind of like a fun thing to, tr to test out. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to kind of show about what I'm doing th with this in case people were interested. I have people in the Discord or maybe Twitter that look at what I do occasionally, so... It's a real low level way of approaching modding for the game, in my opinion, as um, I'm not really working with anything with C Sharp. I'm just simply looking at the files that are there and seeing what I can modify based on the data that I gather, either within the default game files themselves or, and that didn't work. <laughs> so maybe there isn't any vertical orientation that we can be done for that grid, or maybe I just didn't really look close enough to how, oh yeah maybe that needs to actually be on this grid instead so yeah that's not actually <laughs> let's give that a try
But, uh, you know, in my off time between doing other projects, um, when I get stuck on some, one project, I kind of bounce to another one. And maybe ideas are germinate about a different project that I might be stuck on. And I'll kind of cycle around. Keeps helps to keep me from getting any burnout. But it also helps to um, have a, a variety of things. Just so, like I said, you don't, you don't feel stuck. And you don't feel burned out. No, that didn't work either. <laughs> so it could be um, that that value isn't appli applicable to this this type of uh, this arrangement's not applicable to the grid for whatever reason here, but it is here because I know that this arrangement definitely works. And it could be something else. There could be a another default value of how something is structured that I would just have to dig into to see why this wouldn't this isn't going to work the way that I you know initially thought so but uh, yeah that's uh, that's about what I'm doing here thanks for watching